back again from the underground. This time around, I will be talking tools and definitely demonstrating a low drop fade on my guy here. And if you haven't yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. But I did get sent this chameleon blade. I'm not really sure what the details on this are. I am really, really clueless. I don't know if this is like a collaboration or something like that, but I have Veronica sent me this. She goes by at the Barbara S or Barbara S on Instagram. So check her out. But I'm going to remove this graphite 2.0 blade and replace it with the chameleon but blade. What I do want to discuss when it comes to tools, you have to know what you're purchasing. Do not go out of your way purchasing something just because it's what's trending or it's the hottest tool on the market. Buy what you can afford. And of course, make sure to do your homework before you end up purchasing anything that is $150 to $300. You can buy decent tools for about $50 to $100 versus going up into the more higher end stuff. You got to keep it cool. Really just saying, but what works for one person doesn't always work the same. Because every tool works different and everything is not meant for everybody. I'm not really picky about what I use as long as it does the job. So I finally got my blade fixed on. I must admit, my first impression with this blade is very good. I cannot wait to use it on the line. I am very impressed with this blade as far as it's not snagging at the hair. It's not a big fight. I know some people will beat me up for using trimmers to create my bald guidelines because you shouldn't use them to create the bald guidelines. Anyways, to each his own for real, really, at the end of the day. But one thing I want to elaborate on is I'm not a huge fan of switching out blades. Only when it comes down to, let's say, a broken tooth. Anything like that. Like if the teeth are broken on it, I'm switching that blade out. I really don't want to have a kid, especially jumping because my blade is snagging at his head. I really don't want to see that. I don't want anybody to experience that because it's not a very pleasant feeling. So if your blades are dull and are snagging at people's hair, for example, it's time to switch out the blade. If you want to avoid switching out your blades too soon, and I'm talking as soon as let's say six to every 12 months, that sounds expensive. Placement blades aren't cheap, especially if you have some eight tools to deal with. My solution, my advice to you is you need to start shampooing your client's hair or have them shampoo before they arrive to their appointment. Do not force your clipper blades or trimmers to run through hair that's full of product. This will save you a lot. It'll help you avoid having your clipper blades or trimmer blades fight hard to cut the hair. Be careful not to abuse your investments. These tools cost a lot of money. But yo, this chameleon blade definitely is on point. I am very impressed with the bald guideline that I created here. Everything was completely bald. It's, it's as if I used a razor or an electric shaver. These things cleaned everything up. Anyways, moving on to the next guideline. I'm creating my second guideline using my rose gold FX clipper. True story though, check this out. There is barbers out there that really despise these right here. I don't know why. Maybe it's because of the fact that they have a tapered blade on there and it's not particularly a fade blade so the fading blade is really more flat versus the taper blade has more of a curve to it now i believe that most people get a fade instead of a taper so most barbers are looking for the best fading blade this is really all depending on what kind of cutting style you have i enjoy the taper blade it's not bad. I've been using these since forever. Some people say you should really switch it up. Your life will change. I guess, you know, it is what it is. Anyway, if you are paying attention to this fade, what I am moving on to now is my third guideline using the 1.5 clipper lever all the way open. So just some advice, all my guidelines that I create usually are about an inch thick. This is a lot easier for you to blend compared to creating them at a half inch. So when you're doing drop fades, yes, you should do your fades at a half inch, but that means less and smaller space rather to blend compared to, of course, the inch, you have more room and space to blend. So it's a lot easier that way. But if he wanted a more, I guess, tighter fade, we would have made them a half inch instead of the full inch. Get it? 
The steps are really simple. Just work smarter, not harder. When you're creating your guidelines, keep your clipper lever open. And when you start to blend, you start to close slowly, little by little until you blend the line out. That's how I go about it. So if you create your guideline, let's say with your number 1.5, right? You open it all the way, create your guideline. Then when you start trying to erase the line, you close it halfway and then you move forward to closing it entirely, completely all the way. So first you go all the way open. Second, you go closed halfway. Then last, you go closed all the way. Or you can slowly just move it until you see the blurry phase start to get created. It's as simple as that. And if I didn't mention it before, blurry blends take time. So do not by any means skip any steps. There is no shortcuts to greatness. We'll definitely be getting into all that in a whole nother video. Let's get back to talking about these tools. So every guard system when it comes to your tool is definitely different. You got to make sure that you learn what brands such as the Waz, Andis, Oster, as well as Babyless Pro, Gamma all have to offer. Nowadays, a lot of these tools end up having universal guard systems. It's made life easier. It's like a barber's dream. I never really had that growing up. Back in my day, we had to really go one way or the other. But nowadays, that's like the best thing that they ever did. It's like chargers, you know, how the iPhone has a iPhone charger and the Android platform has an Android platform charger and you can't cross them. But nowadays you can kind of do that, which is great. They have gone all out. I mean, you could even switch up the blades now. Yes, I say that, that's right. We have modification kits for clippers and trimmers. I mean, this stuff is so easy to do. It's ready to go as soon as you purchase it. You grab it out of the pack, you slap it on there. Anybody could do it. You don't have to be no MacGyver. I'm talking like walls trimmers can take the Andis blades now, or you can have converter kits that will have the Babyless Pro blade go onto the Gamma. It's really awesome. I mean, I, I love it. You know, I love to see it. I'm here for it. It's amazing. But definitely just you need to find your style. You need to know what works for you. Some people enjoy the detachable style clippers and trimmers as well, I guess. I'm not really sure how that really goes with the detachables. I'm not a fan. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to trigger anybody. I'm just not a fan as in they slow me down. I cut a lot slower compared to the adjustable lever i enjoy flicking that thing back and forth i'm just saying um not trying to demonize anybody's cutting system but it's just not my thing also i really don't mind my tools coming straight out of the box and get them to work i don't really want to do any modifications adjusting maybe if it's necessary but i am not really trying to mess with the factory setting with that being said, zero gapping is one thing I really want to talk about. It's not that deep a zero gap, but I'm not saying I don't have any tools. If I mentioned that before, I have tools that are zero gap, but it's not that serious because you can actually hurt somebody. Now, you have this blade that moves back and forth, right? Which is the cutting blade. Then you have the blade that is just sitting there still, as in the guide blade. That is the blade that you set on the skin to allow the cutting blade that is moving to cut the hair. Now, zero gapping technically means pretty much having no gap at all to the point where the hair is not able to go in between the blades so it's able to be cut. Which will cause you to just cut skin. Now, some people swear that they have mastered how to use zero gapping or how I like to call it. It's called it's just an adjusted blade. That's all it is. Zero gapping is just a coin term that everybody started to use. It's very popular nowadays, which I can respect it a whole lot. Trust me. Like I said, I have tools that are so-called zero gapped. I have purchased zero gap tools as well as just setting them up myself. It is necessary but irrelevant to have, especially if you do not have the experience, because 
If you don't have the experience, it means you are just going to be hurting people, butchering them, opening them up when you should really be cutting hair, not the skin. I go over and over again talking about how you need to be cutting hair, not you the skin. You need to wash that heavy hand. Stop having people leave red, hell boy. Stop having people leave scabbed up, Popeye. Stop being Big Papa Pump. I don't know if y'all know who that is, but uh, <laughs> look it up. Big Papa Pump. <laughs> Another thing I kind of want to touch on is the power in the clippers or trimmers that you're purchasing. I'm probably going to save the rest for a whole different video because I kind of want to get into the whole magnetic motors, you know, the pivot, the rotary, all of that good stuff because it is definitely that deep. You have to know what you're using on your customers. They are paying good money to get a great service. So definitely be careful how you're using your tools and what you're using them for. You have to be mindful of where you place certain blades. So like how I'm mentioning the zero gapping, you can use that for the front line all in the corners as in the vertical bars as well as the C cups or curves, whatever you prefer to call them. You have to be careful where you place some of these tools. The blade that works good for the forehead lineup or in the temple area does not work the same for the nape or underneath at the jawline. Sensitivity varies. Depending on the skin type that your client has, you need to be very careful with the chameleon blade and how you place it on the face. It works fine, but I do not recommend it for the facial hair. As for lineups, definitely go for it. It kind of left my guy a little bit red. The camera or the footage that I have for you doesn't really capture this that well, but I'm going to start off with his mustache really quick and it did well at the bottom line, but when I went up above to get the top of his mustache, it left him red and that's not a good sign. That means don't use that blade on the face. I repeat, do not use sharp blades that are zero gaps on the face. Now, it's not as bad as I'm making it sound. I can easily just ease up on the pressure that I am applying, but I knew that this blade was going to be sharp because when I first laid down my bald guideline, it was cutting really well. Now, I don't know if you see that, he's a little bit red up on top of his lip. And that's not a good sign because that can cause irritation. You can possibly make him bleed or make your client bleed as well as have them bump up instantaneously. Really, I've seen it happen. It's like a rash bumping up kind of thing going on, but he'll be all right. The redness that I'm talking about right now is not really damaged, but it can be if the wrong person that lacks the experience is using this tool. That's called a rookie mistake. But anyway, with the mustache being done, I'm not really gonna touch his soul patch or the chin. He likes to leave that alone. But anyway, I'm starting off in the middle with my lineup here, and this thing is working magic. I may possibly have to do some adjusting with this blade specifically. I have definitely had better blades from Babyless Pro, but I could be speaking too soon on this one because you gotta let Babyless Pro blades run a few times before they get to cutting how they should. But one thing about Babyless Pro is they guarantee you a zero gap straight out of the pack which is good, but then again, like I say, you gotta be careful with zero gap tools. That's not really the best thing, especially for rookies, um, beginner barbers. If you are first starting out, you don't wanna go out there and spend a bunch of money on a tool that you're barely able to use and end up hurting people versus making them look good. The point is to make them look good, feel good, not hurt them. Don't inflict pain on your customers. The only pain or sting, burn, whatsoever they should be feeling is, I don't know what you all use. Some people use sea breeze, some people use alcohol, aftershave, whatever you prefer after the haircut is completed to close up those pores after opening them up from the lineup. But anyway, that lineup on the left side is completed.
I'm going to move over to the right side, which with his lineup, I have to kind of overcorrect on the right side because of how it grows. It's not really perfect right there. So we kind of have to slightly go in just a little bit and get that vertical bar. And if you notice, I brushed his hair and the flow that it grows as in backwards. This is where you have a lot of people mess up and don't really have their lineups or fades being symmetrical with the other side or matching even or balanced out because you got to brush the hair or comb the hair in the flow that it grows because if you don't do that you're going to have a bad cut so on the right side hair usually grows downward moving backwards on the left side it goes forward you get it yeah run that back if you have to double check what i'm talking about if you have any questions on what i am talking about as far as hair flow definitely leave a comment share this video and subscribe i do not make the rules this is all just genetics everybody has a different flow but this is usually the most popular one the hair flows to the right side downward in a backward flow on the left side it flows forward as for the top it goes forward on an angle as you go more towards the right side and flows right into the natural flow. everyone has a different challenge thinning receding or just really just going bald i mean it's as simple as that <laughs> unless you have a bunch of wild colics all over the place that's a different situation <laughs> it's really weird some people have colics like crazy he also has a colic actually which is hiding out but i work around that no big deal i've been cutting this hair for a while but as you can see these trimmers are definitely hitters they are definitely doing what they're supposed to be doing and i didn't have to do anything to the blade it's ready to go but because i like to use the same tool on the forehead lineup as well as the facial lineup I'm gonna have to possibly maybe pull these back or I might just leave them alone to be honest. I have other tools that I can just switch over to and use to go ahead and take care of the face. But when it comes to talking to those who are looking for advice for tools and you have minimal amount of tools, you have to make sure that you are willing to learn how to adjust your tools or seek professional help, find somebody that knows how to adjust the tools and have them do it for you. Because if you don't know what you're doing, you don't want to adjust the tool too sharp and hurt people. Looking at some serious trouble, I mean, you don't want to have those problems, trust me. So seek professional help, definitely get those tools properly adjusted. But as you can see, this fade, the lineup and everything is completed blurry fade clean line definitely worth it the chameleon is a blade that i highly recommend i'm sure somebody out there watching this video will appreciate this blade i will definitely be using this if i didn't say it before i'm probably not even going to try to adjust these i'm going to let them be as they are and again i want to thank you veronica hit her up on ig I will leave the details in the description. Hope you found some of this information helpful. Leave a comment, share this video, and subscribe.